Thank you very much. Thank you. Emma Lagasse, welcome to Emerald Live, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, boy, what a big show for you tonight. Incredible. My mouth is already watering. Because <laughs> one of my favorite cuisines, if you don't know, is Italian. And, uh... Oh, yeah, man. And, uh, particularly the food of Sicily. Ah! Unlike the rest of Italy, Sicilian food has a very distinct Mediterranean, a little African flavors, North African flavors, Arabic. And, uh, that... All that works beautifully together. Tonight, that's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna leave the mainland and, uh, head for this magnificent island of Sicily. That's what we're gonna do. Yeah. Hey, speaking about an awesome... Give it up for Doc Gibbs and the Emerald Live Band! Whoa, yeah! So, are you all ready to bring your appetite along? Yeah! We'll be kicking it up Sicilian style right here on Emerald Live! Let's, uh, let's see what uh, we got on the menu here tonight. Kind of excited. Hi, Jay. Big game last night, eh? Happy birthday. Oh. What are you, 26 today? <laughs> Plus... <clears throat> We're gonna begin, folks, with... Uh, you gotta understand in Sicily, right? It's, uh, like I said, it's an island. It's not on the mainland of Italy, so it's, you know, it's in the ocean. And probably one of the most distinctive ingredients known is tuna. Uh, because of where it is and a lot of canyons that are set around it. Beautiful fishing area, and Sicilians love to fish, particularly tuna. So what they do is uh, one of the magical things that uh, I just absolutely love that you can buy, uh, and they do it so well, is this, uh, this canned tuna. But it's not, not like our canned tuna. This is like real special stuff. So I'm going to show you when you get a lot of tuna how to make a home-cured tuna in olive oil. Then with that, uh, you can let that age and you can save some tuna for later on. Uh, Sicilian-style chickpea and tuna salad is what we're gonna put that tuna into. It's absolutely delicious. And then uh, the traditional rice balls that they do with uh, um, borio rice, uh, risotto rice, except in Sicily, they don't usually just fill them with cheese. In this case, in Sicily, they fill them with bolognese sauce, which is absolutely delicious. And then... Ragusa, which we're going to talk a little bit about that. That's a little town uh, in Sicily. Uh, we're going to do a little Ragusa-style ricotta ravioli, which is uh, unbelievable. We'll tell you all about that. And then wait till you see this uh, invalini, which is uh, this uh, sort of meat. Um, and uh, it has a little uh, palm uh, pecorino, some pine nuts, uh, little raisins, and it's sort of rolled up. Absolutely fantastic. So that's what's on the menu tonight, beside probably a lot of Italian wine. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. So... As I said, you, um... You get beautiful tuna, and you get lots of it. And, uh, you've had some, and you've had some, and we've all had a lot of tuna, so... Now we want to sort of preserve it. Like in Portugal, the Portuguese people, what they do with a lot of codfish that they get, they actually salt it and cure it, and uh, that way they can have it uh, six months from now. Kind of the same principle, but this is done in olive oil. So, first thing is that uh, I have a, a dish uh, full with great Italian olive oil, and I want to flavor that olive oil with a little bit of marjoram, 
So we're gonna put some marjoram, which is a wonderful little herb. And then uh, what we also wanna do is we wanna take a bit of garlic and just sort of smash it like this and smash the clove like that, which is really gonna get the flavor going and we're gonna then put the smashed garlic inside of the olive oil. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is um, take some sea salt and really sort of salt this tuna on both sides. And of course, <laughs> oh, you gotta wash your hands, cause Sicilian tuna police are probably somewhere out there. <laughs> so we're gonna have nice sea salt on this now. And uh, a little bit of pepper. And then what we're gonna do, folks, is this. You're gonna take the tuna steak now, and you're gonna just sort of submerge it inside of the olive oil. And then you wanna have enough olive oil to really sort of cover Now, don't think that we're gonna waste this olive oil. Because when it's done, generally what they'll do is they'll strain this and put it in a container, and they'll use this for cooking, uh, fast cooking, and it's delicious. So we're gonna cover this up, and then we're gonna put the oven at about 300 degrees, real slow, Then we're gonna start roasting this for about two hours, and then the tuna cooks, but it stays moist with the olive oil, we get the flavor of the marjoram and the garlic. And then we come back. I'm going to show you how uh, there are different ways and canisters that you can use to preserve and keep the tuna, depending on how long you want to keep it for. But I'll show you that when we come back. Stick around. Doc Gibbs in the Emerald Live Band. <laughs> tonight, folks, so we're going to get right to it now because uh, that tuna, about two, two and a half hours in the oven, and uh, then basically what we did is we took it out of the oven. Now it's hot, okay? And, oh, yes, indeed. <laughs> you know, before we go into the chickpea and tuna salad, little traditional Sicilian salad dish, especially chickpeas, I talked about preserving some of this for later. Got a lot of tuna for later. I talked about this canister. This canister is perfect if you are uh, going to work with it in the refrigerator, not in the pantry, obviously. If you're going to do this pantry style, like traditional canning, you know, when you use these guys here, you can do them in this, but you got to follow the uh, canning procedure directions, right? You got to sterilize them. Bob, blah, blah, blah. you got to drain them good, don't touch them, you know. But they last for six months. So. <laughs> now, if we're going to see the salt on this here, what I do is I just sort of drain it as much as I can. That's okay. That's all right. <laughs> and I just use sort of my a little hot yet to be doing this, but time is of the essence here. So what I do to uh, preserve this is I'll just sort of use the foil and I break it up like this. Like I said, it's hot. You don't need to mash it all up, you know? Uh, very different than, than our tuna. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use this inside of our Wonderful little, and it's still hot, so we're gonna let this cool a bit. But that's basically to 
preserve this. We're going to let it cool. Oh, look at how beautiful that is. And um, then what you're going to then do is, as I said, you want to use some of this olive oil and uh, begin to cover the olive oil. And for me, I like the marjoram, the garlic. Oh, yeah, babe. Oh, yeah. We're going to get that right in there. And then basically now you can see that it's covered with the olive oil just perfectly. And now we're going to let this cool, and then we can put it in the ice box and we can, we can keep it for a few weeks. Now, we want to make a dish with this, so let me show you this. Chickpeas, lemon juice, a little red wine vinegar, raisins or currants, a little chopped nut of your choice, little lemon or orange zest, toasted pine nuts, maybe a little anchovy, some red onion, and um, got to have a little basil, right? So we're going to take a little chiffonade of basil here. As soon as you do that, it gets really perfumey and fragrant. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take some of that olive oil. Oh, yeah, babe. Oh, they don't waste it. Oh, no. Before they do that, man, they'll stop brushing their teeth with it. And I kind of like it. So what we're going to do is, again, flake the tuna, just like I'm doing here. OK, don't go in there and mashing it all up and didn't do anything to you. So now this tuna is going to go right in here, OK? And then we're going to just lightly toss all those ingredients. Now, for me, A little salt, just a little bit, because we had salt in that tuna, right? For me, it's kind of like this, folks. Look, let me show you. For me, it's kind of like one, two, three, four. It's hard boiled egg. And then it's like this for me. And there you have it, a little uh, chickpea and tuna salad. Yeah. When we come back, I'm going to show you these amazing rice balls. Stick around. We'll be right back. Bye, man. Sicily tonight. Woo! So we did uh, preserved tuna, and then we took some of that and tun turned it into a wonderful chickpea and tuna salad. Um, and now, uh, this arancini is the name for it, which uh, sort of means uh, small oranges, because oranges are huge, uh, and so are lemons in Sicily. 
So we're going to start with uh, the risotto to make the arancini. And so I have a little butter first and onion that we start with. And then, of course, we're using the rice, which is a boreal rice. Got a lot of starch in it. A great risotto is going to take time to, to stir it. It's all in the stirring. Once you start the liquid, it's all in the stirring. So now that the uh, onion is seasoned, we're going to add just a tiny bit of white wine. Now we can turn the heat up, and we're going to add the rice. That simple. And in this case, we're going to add a little bit of saffron, probably the most expensive spice on the planet right now. So um, nice color. A, lot, a little of this goes a long way. So I'm literally talking about a pinch like this, which is going to give it the color. Now, once we start, we're bringing out a little bit of that color. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit more white wine. Yeah. And then... And then you start with the stock, either a beef stock, you could use a chicken stock. But what you want to do is you want to add a little stock at a time, and you begin to start stirring it. And it's going to take about 22 minutes. So forget calling your friends right now. <laughs> Even on the handheld, OK? Just keep it real. 22 minutes, trust me. I've done it enough time. And what's going to happen, 22 minutes, you're going to keep adding liquid into it. You're going to see the starch. And at the end of this, this is what it's going to look like. You can see it's got this amazing color. OK? Oh, yeah. Now, when it's right at the end here, you see, and I, I don't have it very loose, like if I was serving risotto. I would have it much looser. I'd add cream, I'd add Parmesan cheese, and then I would serve you. And the reason why I'm doing that is because now, basically, you want to let this cool. You can add chopped basil in there, parsley, etc. Now, Yanacini, the little risotto balls, okay? I use an ice cream scoop. Before I show you that, earlier we made a very, very lean, very thick ragu, okay, or bolognese, okay? But we didn't add the milk at the end because we want it thick. Reason for that is this. You're going to take a, a scoop of the risotto, and you're going to use your hand sort of like this to make like a little shell, OK? Then what you're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of the bolognese, like that. And then you're going to begin to shape this little ball like this, OK? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a big time show here. Now. They need a traditional breading, but I'll show you that when we come back. Stick around. You don't want to miss this delicious <laughs> stuffed rice ball. Dr. Lagasse here enjoying some unbelievable Sicilian food. Smelling good in here, isn't it? Y'all yeah. having a good time so far? Yeah. All right. Before I get into the ragusa in a second here, that would be uh, what I've started here. I'm going to show you the ganchini, the risotto balls, and how they're finished is in a traditional breading, flour, egg wash, and then last is some Italian spiced herbs. 
This here is ribs. Little pork ribs, riblets. Oh yeah, that I'm gonna brown here, show you that in a second. Now, very important that we brown them. Now, once you get the risotto balls filled with the bolognese, flour, egg wash, and then the last is the breadcrumbs, okay? Bread them real good. And then when you're ready, basically what I do, I got a little vegetable oil, about 300. You don't want to overcrowd them. And if you're doing this on the stove at home, you only want to have the oil in the pot about half, 60%, because when you add something in the fry, it's going to expand, OK? Unless you want to renovate your kitchen. <laughs> All right, so we have the arancini, kind of big, stuffed with the bolognese in there. Now, the bolognese sauce that I had, that I was stuffing in there, was very thick. I told you, I didn't add the milk or the cream. Why waste that? OK? So what I did is I, during the commercial break, I put it inside of a sauce pot, brought it back up to temperature, added the milk to it, added a label, little ladle of that beef stock that we were making the, uh, the risotto with, OK? And now I have that. I'm going to finish that with a little bit of chopped parsley. And I'm going to finish that with some basil. I'm just going to sort of tear some basil leaves like this. All right, look at that. We're going to work that in here. I mean, you'll see what my madness here in a second. That's the right beautiful color of bolognese sauce, OK? Oh, yeah. Now, the riblets, the pork riblets I'm browning, just salt and pepper, olive oil. And uh, basically, Oh, look at this. Oh, yeah, babe. Oh, yeah, babe. Now, before I go into, uh, before I go into more of these, I'm going to show you what I absolutely would do. The risotto is cooked, so we're just getting a nice color in this thing, OK? Switching back over here for a second, ragusa. It's sort of in the northeast tip of Sicily, OK? The town of Ragusa. This ragu is uh, served with ravioli, ricotta ravioli. But I told you, they do a little bit with the spice. You know, and they play off of that North African Arabic, that sweet and sour thing. So this particular ricotta has not only ricotta cheese, but it actually has sugar, a bit of sugar in it, which is very unusual for ravioli. And then I told you that they use a lot of citrus, particular orange. So what we're going to do is that's going to be that simple is going to be our filling here. And we'll come back to that now. We're going to take our risotto balls out now, OK? Oh, yeah, we're going to fry some more of these. I want to show you what I would do. Now. A little salt like that. Now, how I would serve these? You could serve these as a sort of smaller, as an appetizer. Uh, what I do. I'll show you what I do. I uh, like to take my bolognese sauce. I don't want to waste it. And I want to put the bolognese sauce on the bottom of the plate. And then I want to take my agaccini. And I want to take Parmesan cheese. And then I'm just going to take a little bit of basil. And it doesn't get any simpler than that. There you have it, okay? 
All right? Now. There's something about pork ribs that just absolutely make a tomato sauce kind of special. So I'm adding onions in there. Now watch these spices, a lot different. Fennel seed, cinnamon, allspice, and a little nutmeg, okay? A little bit different. We're gonna scrape the bottom down here. Oh yeah, babe. Now, once that starts cooking, we're gonna take some good tomatoes. Oh yeah, babe. We're gonna take some good tomatoes like that. And then we're gonna take our ribs. We're gonna put them right back inside there. So we're gonna turn the heat down on these. We're gonna turn the heat down on these and let them simmer, let them get all nice and tender and delicious. And then we're gonna take some pasta sheets and make very simple ravioli, ricotta ravioli. And our ragusa, ragu, is just simmering on. And I'm gonna serve some of those risotto balls while we take a break. Stick around, we'll be right back. this unbelievable Mediterranean, Sicilian, oh, flavors. I gotta tell you, uh, the ragusa, we, uh, during the commercial break, we been simmering. I added a little tiny bit of wine, little Sicilian wine. Yeah. <laughs> Took the boat motor, <laughs> kind of got the boat motor in the tomato sauce a little bit to kind of break it down so it wasn't so chunky in those tomatoes. And um, somebody asked uh, about, um, about how long, about an hour and 30, maybe even two hours. You want those pork riblets. I love that name. <laughs> riblets of pork. How's the arancini? Good. Yeah. Yeah. It's just something about, you know, I was talking. I was talking with my, uh, my pal, Sal, who uh, is in the back there, and uh, Sal spent a lot of time in Sicily, and he was uh, saying, his great restaurant also in New Jersey here, and uh, he's telling me that he took these uh, risotto uh, last week, and he actually made a filling with lobster and, uh, and corn, and put that inside the risotto, and, uh, and then sort of did it like a little lobster ragu. Oh, I, I'm, I'm dying over here, folks. I'm, <laughs> Time I talk to Sal, I'm dying. Okay, so the ragusa is going. Let's go over ravioli real quick, all right? Uh, you can see that I have a damp towel beside it being covered with paper, parchment paper. I have fresh pasta sheets. You can buy them, make them. Basically now, what we're gonna do is this. We're gonna take an egg and uh, just make a little, quick little egg wash. so it will adhere a little bit. And then basically now what we're gonna do, folks, is we're gonna take a beautiful ravioli. Look how thin that is, you know, just beautiful. We're gonna put that down on one side. And then we're gonna take a little pastry brush with our egg wash. And we're just gonna sort of Egg wash our sheet. 
And then what we're going to do is now we're going to just take a little bit of the... Uh, see, I, I just kind of use this as a little guidance right here. Just sort of lightly mark them. So I kind of know where we're at here. And I'm just going to take a little of the ricotta filling. Oh, yeah, babe. Not too much because then it starts getting to oozing out here and then you got problems. All right, so then I take the next sheet here, believe it or not, and then I, uh, I wash it again here. And then I uh, kind of just fold this right over. Get it nice and together. And then you can just get your little ravioli cutter like this and you just punch them out. See, and you got beautiful ravioli here. Now, this is not getting a little sticky here, homie. So we got a little ravioli. So don't worry about these uh, pieces because what I do is I... Uh, I use the pieces for, like, regular noodles. I mean, why waste them? So I cut out these little raviolis like this. And uh, just make sure they're nice and together. Now, you can do these in advance. And um, then what you want to do is when you're ready to cook them, I make them the day before. I like them a little firmer. Keep them in the refrigerator covered really want to salt you, uh, your pasta water. And um, when I'm ready, I just take them out of the refrigerator, okay? Get that water going. And then basically, I drop them in. I like them cold. I think they adhere better. They're not going to take a long time. I had this thing boiling like a... Okay. All right. <laughs> I swear, I got ghosts in here, you know? They just come behind me and take my pans and <laughs> turn the stove down and... <laughs> kind of digging this little ricotta ravioli, I'm aren't you? I'm digging it, I'm digging it. All right, so now, again, folks, they'll float. Make them ahead of time. Make sure they're together. Put them in the ice box. They're gonna be great. This stuff here, it's like Pompadel noodles, man. It's great pasta. Keep it in a little, uh, little pile like that. Beautiful. Now, while we're waiting on uh, this ragu here, let's talk about, um, you know, this, this dish, involtini, right? It's this meat. And uh, it kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, brujol. Uh, but basically... You get a little top steak like this, cut it into little pieces like this, and two things. Uh, we're going to start with a, a little Sicilian olive oil, and we're going to add some onion in here. Okay? Now, this here, we gotta, we got to pound this out a little bit. <laughs> all right? So we got to pound this out. Now, that's not going to make it tender just because we're pounding it out like this. So what I like to do, this is a very inexpensive cut of meat. And this is a very, very popular dish. I get a little uh, jacotta, uh, which is a tenderizer. See, these little needles. And uh, go to the big fancy butcher shops. They got these machines that just put the meat down and tenderizes anything. But here, you just sort of... I like to use this for even for my veal. Now, here's the key with this. The key is, is we gotta make a little filling. Just like I said, brujol. Breadcrumbs, Parmesan cheese, a little raisins, zest of lemon, parsley, and pine nuts with the onions. We're gonna mix that all in there, okay? Then we're gonna use that crumb mixture, which is gonna go on the meat. We're gonna season and we're gonna roll them up, okay? Now look at this, the ravioli, they don't take any time at all. So here's what we're gonna do. First thing, 
Oh, yeah. Make sure you drain them good. That's the first thing. Okay? Now, after they drain, we're going to take the ricotta ravioli. Okay? Oh, wait. <laughs> Come on, join the party. Now, be careful. Now what we're going to do is this. We're going to take the ragusa. OK? We're going to take the ragusa. Look at those ribs. And we're just going to put that right over there. Right over like that. Oh, yeah. And then we're going to put some Parmesan cheese on this. When we come back, I'm going to show you about this meat that we're going to put on the grill. Stick around. In Volpini. Sicilian specialties tonight. All right, let's get right to it, all right? So I got the onion. Oh, we got some of that ravioli with the ragusa, ragu out there. Ooh, man. So I got the onion now mixed with the breadcrumbs, which we're going to now add the Parmesan cheese, the pine nuts, raisins, fresh parsley, and that lemon zest. We're going to just sort of mix this mixture up now. And then you want to moisten this mixture up now with some good Sicilian olive oil. Oh, don't be afraid of that. And it should be wet, but not too wet. Not too dry. That's about right. So here's what you do. We're going to season the meat. Salt and pepper. And then we're going to take a little bit of this here. And a little bit of this here. And then what you do is you're going to roll it. You with me? Yeah. All right. Instant replay at home. You're going to roll it like this. Roll it tight. Okay. Now, what you're going to do is this. You're going to take some soaked skewers. And you're going to take one. Then you're going to take another one. Now, watch this trick. Now, you're going to take a fresh bay leaf. Oh, yeah, babe. Right down there. And then... You're going to take a little onion, a little pearl onion. And then you're going to take the other piece of the meat. Just like this, skewered. And then you're going to finish it with pearl onion. Finish it with pearl onion. Now, once you have that, what you want to do is you want to use a little of that sea salt. You pop it right on the grill. And this is kind of like a street food. So now we're going to turn these over here. These I've started. And then what we're also going to do, which is very, very popular, is we're going to take some escarole. OK? We're going to put that on the grill. A little escarole. Oh, yeah, babe. Little olive oil. A 
little salt, mm, 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 mm. and a little pepper. Now this is gonna go real quick. And you don't wanna like just cook this, the schmitherines, but basically, now what we're gonna do is this. We're gonna take that little bit of that warm escarole like this. Oh yeah, babe, look at that. A little bit of that escarole like that. And then we're gonna take our little skewers and you lay them on top and then you're ready to pass them around and have a party, folks, you know what I mean? That's the way it is. Sicilian food, baby. Hey, I wanna thank you for joining me tonight. I'm Emma Lagasse. I'll see you next time.